Okay, so we've spent a lot of time practicing solving multi-step equations, um, including combining like terms, distributive property, etc. So now we're going to take that skill to the next level and we are going to still solve multi-step equations, but then we're going to identify whether that specific equation has one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. So there's three options. And we're gonna explain in this video lesson exactly how we get those, okay? So it says most equations we have solved so far have only one solution. However, there are two special cases. No solution and infinite solution problems. So we're gonna solve the equations below to see what happens. Okay, because in order to understand the context of this skill, we really have to do the math and see what it looks like at the end. So for one solution, let's solve this problem. Okay, so we've got three times the quantity 2x plus nine equals negative five minus two x. So remember our steps, we have that four step process. Step one is to distribute if you see parentheses, and we do. So distribute your claw. 3 times 2x, we get 6x. 3 times positive 9 is positive 27. Then we just have these two terms, nothing to do yet. Split your river. Okay, I'm going to box my uh, variable terms, and I'm going to circle my constants to see what I got going on, to see if I can combine any like terms. And what you'll see is we've got variable constant, river, constant variable. So there's nothing to combine on individual sides of the equal sign. So now we gotta move stuff. Um, so start with the variable term that is in lesser value. So negative two X's is less than six X's. So we're gonna add two X's to both sides. See what happens. Those cancel because they make zero. Six X's plus two X's is eight X's. I still have plus 27, I still have my equal sign, and I have minus five on the right. Okay, so now we've got plus 27 and negative five still. So I need to move this plus 27 away from my variable. So I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is subtraction. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I'm going to cancel those because they make zero. And then I'm left with 8x on the left is equal to negative 5 minus 27 is going to get more negative. So I have negative 32 on the right. And then my final step is 8 is being multiplied by x. So to get rid of my 8, I divide both sides by 8. The 8s cancel because they make 1. And so I'm left with 8, or I'm sorry, x equals negative 4 as my answer. Okay, this is the only solution that will make the equation true. Okay, so what that means is, is if I take my answer, my negative four, and I plug it back into my original equation everywhere where I see a variable, so in this case, x, then I'm gonna get a true statement. So I'm gonna get the same number on the left as I do on the right when I evaluate. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about with that. Okay, so I'm going to replace this real quick with a sticky note. Okay, this is called also checking your solution. Okay, so if we ever say check your solution, what we mean is plug your answer back into the original equation and see if you get a true statement. Okay, so I went back to the original equation. So I've got three times the quantity of 2x plus 9 equals negative five minus two X. And I got negative four as my answer. So what I'm gonna do is instead of writing X, when my pencil gets ready to write the letter X, instead I'm gonna write my answer of negative four. So let me show you what that looks like. I have three on the outside of the parentheses. Then I have parentheses. Then I have two. Then I would write an X, but instead of writing X, I'm gonna write negative four in parentheses because it's being multiplied. Then I still have plus nine inside the parentheses group. Then I have an equal sign, okay? So I'm gonna see what I get on the left first, then I'll see what I get on the right. So following order of operations PEMDAS, I would have to do uh, parentheses first. 
So inside parentheses, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then I have to do uh, inside out with PEMDAS. So negative 8 plus 9 is positive 1. And then I've got 3 times 1 is 3. I don't know if you guys did these last year where you did like the PEMDAS triangles and it simplified it and got it narrower. So when I evaluate the left side of my original problem and I plugged negative four back in for X, when I evaluated that side of the equation, I got three. So now my goal is to see if I also get three on the right side. So the right side of the equal sign was negative five minus two X. So instead of writing the X there, I'm gonna write negative four. So this is negative five minus two X, but I have negative four for X, so I can substitute it in. So now this is a lot of negatives, folks. So you gotta be careful and we gotta work parentheses outward. So this is really, so you can look at this problem two ways. Either two times negative four is negative eight. So then it's negative five minus negative eight which turns that to a positive. Or you could look at this as, and this is the way I do it, that negative belongs to that two. So when you multiply, the negatives cancel and make a positive. So either way, you end up adding. And when we do that, we get positive three. And what you'll notice is when we evaluated both sides, we got three and three. So this is a true statement. Three does equal three. The left side was three, the right side was three. It's a true statement. So that solution, of negative four is the only thing that would work for that problem, okay? So if we plugged anything else in for x, we would not get three equals three. We might get like three equals five or two equals one, and that's not true. So those solutions don't work. There's only one answer that works for this problem, and it's negative four. That's what one solution means, okay? Only one answer for x. Now we're going to talk about the special cases. So all the problems we've done in the past week or two weeks or your entire life in math, you've worked with one solution because when you solve it, you get one answer for X or one answer for Y or one answer for G or whatever the variable is, okay? Now you're gonna see something a little different. So we're still gonna solve it the same way we've been solving these multi-step equations, but you're gonna start to see some differences, okay? So I'm gonna start by looking to see if there's anything to distribute. Remember, you're looking for parentheses. So there is on the right side, I'm going to draw my claw. So that is 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times positive 3 is 12. Positive 12, so I get a plus 12. And then I'm going to keep my plus 1. Then I'm going to split my river. And I'm going to uh, circle my constants over here too with the sign in front of it. And I'm going to box my variable terms. And then over here, I've got this and this, okay? This is where a lot of kiddos are making mistakes. So when you're combining like terms on one side of the equation, cover up the other one. Same thing over here. Do them by themselves, okay? Because what I was seeing a lot of last week was folks were trying to like minus 7x over and plus 3x over and cross the river. But you don't cross the river when you combine like terms like that, okay? We ignore the other part of the the side of the river, and we just do what the problem tells us. So if I ignore the purple and I read the blue problem, that's 7x's minus 3x's. So I'm simplifying it and making it 4x's before I move anything across the river. Okay. Then I'm left with negative 9. So I'm going to recode uh, re my numbers, my terms. Okay. And then I need to combine terms on the right side. So 4x's, and then I've got 12 plus 1 is 13. And then I need to recode circles and box, okay? So now let me rewrite this a little bit so that we're like all on the same line. I've got 4x minus 9, and I've got 4x plus 13, okay? So as you'll notice, we've got variable, constant, equal sign, variable constant. The variable terms are exactly the same, okay? So when I go to minus one of them to move it across the river, it cancels. And then I have to do the same thing over here. It also cancels because they're the same. So now my variable terms are gone. 
from the problem. They made, they made zero, so they're gone. So I'm left with negative nine equals positive 13. So ask yourself, is that a true statement? Does negative nine ever equal 13? The answer is no. So we like to put either a slash through the equal sign or we put like a frowny face because it's not a true statement. That does not necessarily mean you made a mistake. It actually, in this case, you did not make a mistake. You simplified and you combined and you solved appropriately. This is not a true statement. So there is no solution that will make the equation true. There's nothing you can plug in for x. You can't plug in x equals 2, x equals negative 2, x equals 100. There's no value that you could plug back into this original equation and get the same number on the left as you do on the right. It's not possible. So we say there is no solution, and the symbol for that is like a zero with a cross through it, kind of like a cancel sign. There's no solution to that equation. Okay, so again, no solutions. When you simplify them down and solve them, you get a number on one side that is not equal to another number on the right side. Okay, no solution. Infinite solution is the opposite. Infinite means any, pretty much any solution, all the solutions, all the real numbers, okay? So we're gonna solve it the same way we have been. Okay, so we're looking to distribute first. So in this problem, I can distribute on the left side of my equal sign, and I can distribute this negative two with the claw. So negative two times three x is negative six x, and negative two times negative five, a negative times a negative turns it to a positive 10. Okay, so that's another mistake a lot of kids are making. So make sure you're watching those um, negatives in your multiplication, okay? Then over here, I've got 2x and negative 8x that can be combined and a positive 10 that cannot be combined. So again, don't minus 2x, don't add 8x because we're ignoring the left side of the river. Just look at what the equation tells you, 2x minus 8x. So if I have 2x's and I take away 8x's, I'm in the negative. I have negative 6x now and I still have plus 10. Look at your sides of the river. What do you notice? Yeah, they're exactly the same. Negative 6x plus 10 is negative 6x plus 10. So we're going to sol still solve this down as far as we can. Um, so what you would do is you would try to move the lesser variable. Well, they're equal. So I'm going to add 6x's here, but then I'm also going to add 6x's here. And you're going to notice, just like in this problem, blurry, they both cancel. So these cancel because they make zero, and these cancel because they're a zero pair. So now I'm left with 10 is equal to 10. Is 10 equal to 10? You betcha. So it gets a smiley face because that is a true statement. Okay, that is a true statement. So what that means is that there is... For any value of x, I could plug any number into x and I'm going to get the same number on the left side of the equation as I do on the right. So all real numbers, all solutions will make the equation true. And instead of writing out infinite solutions every time, we just draw the pretty infinity sign, which is a sideways 8, kind of. Okay? All right, so what I want you to do you have an option. You can either pause the video, try to solve these and classify them without watching me prompt it. So pause and then solve it and then play the video again when you're like, yeah, I'm ready. Or actually I'll probably make a part two for this. So this part will end and then you'll watch part two. Okay. Or if you're like, yeah, I really just like, I'm not there yet and I'm not really able to do it independently yet, then just go ahead and click part two and then go through your notes with me prompting you. Um, either way, you're gonna watch part two because you need to check the answers, but you have a choice here. You can either try these four and then watch part two and just get the answers and check the work, or you can watch part two and do it guided like you just did with this part. Okay, so your choice there, but make sure you do watch part two either way.